In this module, I'm going to show you the basic commands that you use to create a quilt design with Slit and Sew Quilt Designer. We'll create a design, we'll save it, and I'll show you how to open it up later if you want to modify it or look at it in the future. On the screen I have the Chrome browser up and I'm going to go to where I saved the downloaded Slit and Sew Quilt Designer file. I recommend that you create a folder where you can save this file and you can also use that same folder to store your designs so that they're all handy in one place. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to enter Control O which allows me to navigate on my computer to where Slit and Sew Quilt Designer is. As you can see, I created a folder called Slit and Sew on my C drive. And in there, I have the tool Quilt Designer version 0.1. I'm going to select it and open it. And there it is. Now you'll see on this page, there are three main areas that the Quilt Designer tool has. In the middle, it's currently empty, is where the blocks will be created and where you can modify them. Over on the left are tools and actions that you can use to create and modify your designs and perform other functions. Over on the right hand side, if you use swatch images to do uh, the fills on your blocks, uh, these are swatch images of fabric, this is where you will add them and manage them. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do when you create a design is to create places where you can add your blocks. And right here where you see the mouse, it says Add and Delete Rows and Columns. So we just click on the Add button and you'll see this is a place where you have a block. And when you add and delete, you'll see in the drop down menu here on the left that you can add or delete to the top, the right hand side, the bottom, or the left. I'm going to create four columns and four rows. So let me add three more blocks. So I've now got a column of four. And now I'm going to add more columns to the right, just like that. And you can see I have room for 16 blocks. If I want to delete one, I can delete, let's say, the bottom. I can add it back. And you can do this at any time during your design. Now what I want to do is I want to start adding blocks and start creating my design. And the way I do that is with the Block Actions menu. You'll see there are a bunch of actions, and I'm going to use the Add uh, Block action. You'll see that the actions are color-coded. The yellow ones are things to do with manipulating the blocks themselves in terms of adding, copying them, removing, and rotating them. The blue colored ones all have to do with the fill that you use, and I'll show you that in a minute. When you add a block, you select what block type you want. The yellow colored ones in the menu are ones that you create using the slit and sew templates. We have double wedding ring currently, drunkard's path, melon, and winding ways. In the future, we'll be adding more uh, templates to this menu. The green part of the menu are non-slit and sew uh, blocks that you can add to your design. These are things that will add more uh, variety and um, texture to your quilt designs. But again, these blocks down here are not created using the slit and sew templates. What I'm going to do is I want to add Drunkard's Path. So you can see I've got the Add selection here. I've selected the block type. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the block that I want to add it to. I'm going to add another one, and another one, and another one. And I can do this as often as I want in any blocks that I want. Now in my design, what I want to do is I want to be able to rotate the blocks, or some of them. So I select Rotate. Notice how my mouse the cursor changes to a rotate type of action. So it'll tell you what action you've selected. I'm going to rotate this block one time. It rotates 90 degrees on each click. This one I'm going to rotate twice. This one three times. 
Now one of the things that's really cool about slit and sew is that we standardize some of the templates on the same sizes. For example, 6 inch finished, 8 inch finished, and so forth. And so you can mix and match block types within the quilt design, which gives you a lot of variety and a lot of fun to play with. I'm now going to add a melon. So I select the block action of add. I now want the melon. And I'm going to put them in the corner. And I'm also going to rotate two of them. Now to finish off my design, I'm going to go back and add another block. I want to add a half square triangle. Here, here, and all the other places. And then I'm going to rotate some of those. And now I've completed my design. But as you'll see, it's all filled with the color white, and we want to start filling it with colors to give it some life. In a later module, I'll show you how to add um, or do the fills with swatch images. In this module, I'll show you how to do it with colors. In order to do that, you select the Fill with Color action. And over here on this Fill Colors menu, you have 24 different colors that you can select from. My favorite is blue. So I'll pick blue. And notice the mouse cursor changes. And I just click on wherever I want blue. I think this time I'm going to pick red. And I'm going to do that here. Next I'm going to pick, um, let's say, light blue. And now I want to pick pink. Now, you can do all the fills like I'm doing one at a time. In the next module, I'll show you how to do a copy to save you a little time. Now we're going to finish this uh, off by filling in the half square triangles. Um, we'll just pick gold. See what this looks like. And what would go gold, good with gold? Maybe, I don't know, 10? No, I don't like 10, so let's pick something else. Maybe khaki? Yeah, a little better. Now there's my design. And as you saw, if you want to change the color, no problem. Just pick a different color and click on uh, the shape that you want to change the color and proceed accordingly. But let's say this is now what you want to uh, have saved as part of your design. I do want to show you something else in here before I do that. Right in here, it's a grayed out a little bit, call it the information button. Notice how I click it, it's now no longer grayed out. If I click it, it's grayed out. What does it do? Well, if I put my mouse over some of the buttons, it'll tell you what this button does or what this menu does. But in the workspace, if I put my mouse over a shape, notice it'll give you some information. Let's start up here in the top left. It says it's block one. The middle piece is, and it's a melon. The middle piece is piece B and it's light blue. If I move it down to this other shape, still block one, still a melon, but it's piece A now, and it's pink. You'll notice the blocks are numbered one, two, three, four, all the way down to block 16. So now you can keep track of what you've got and you know what, what's loaded in there. Now, before I save, I want to show you one more thing, the yardage calculations. You've got this great design. How much yardage do I need? Well, you click on the yardage, and now it says, well, what's your block size? Well, the melons 
and the drunkard's path each come in 6 inch finished or 8 inch finished? Let's pick 6. Now, sometimes browsers are configured where it'll block a pop-up. There was a message that came here, but so we'll just do it again. And it did it. Each browser may be configured differently, so if you get that, just do it again and it should come up. Now you'll notice that it's got the finished quilt size at the top. Remember, it was four blocks across by four down, and each one was six inch finished, so it's a 24 by 24 inch finished quilt size. There's a table here, and what it does is it shows every block type and piece and color combination says how many pieces did you have? And then it says how many strips do you need to cut from a piece of fabric? In this case five and a half inches wide, you need one strip, and that's about a quarter yard. And down here it shows the totals of the fabric yardage for the different colors that you have. In some cases you may be using the same color or the same fabric that is for more than one piece, so it sums it up from the table above and gives you your totals. Now it's important that you read some of the notes here at the bottom because it explains some of the assumptions that were made in calculating the fabric totals. We tried to be a little conservative here to make sure you have enough fabric. There may be more optimal ways to do things, but we leave that all up to you. Finally, you can use these buttons to print this page so that you can take it to your handy quilt store and get the print fabric that you need. But if you want to add borders and binding, just click these buttons and it'll take you to the existing quilt calculators we've had on our site to calculate what you need for borders and bindings. When you're all done, you close. And now we're back to Quilt Designer. Finally, let's say we want to save our design because it's a good idea that you want to save it. So we click on the Save button. Now you can read all this stuff here, but basically what it says is you go to the menu, click on it, and you go to Save Page As. As I said at the beginning of this module, I recommend that you set up a folder where you can save all of your designs. Here it is in our Slit and Sew folder. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this DP for Drunkard's Path and Melon. And I'm going to save it. And when I'm done, I close it. Now let's say that we're all done with this design. I'm going to start a new one. You can just simply just delete it and you can start over. Or let's pretend that you just brought the tool up a week from now and you want to get your design. You now go over to Open, navigate over to your folder, Slit and Sew, select your design, and open it, and there it is. And you can do whatever you want at this point. This concludes this module. What I'll be showing in the next module are some more advanced functions, like copying and swatch images. Thank you very much.